Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 13 of Blender Master Course Materials, Textures and Nodes Basics of Node Components And if you are new to this course then you can watch the previous 13 chapters on the link of the playlist in the pinned comment From this chapter we will be beginning our journey of exploring materials, textures and nodes And all this would be covered in the upcoming 15 chapters of this course The reason for having so many chapters is to understand all aspects of materials, textures and nodes in Blender And in this introductory video we will begin with these topics that will help us to understand fundamentals of node components so let's Let's begin with it. Now by default Blender opens in this layout workspace and Blender gives you the option of a separate workspace for working on materials, textures and nodes and to access it you have to click here where it's written shading workspace and from here you can change the material of your object but in this course we won't be working in this way we'll be having a better interface to work on materials and to create this you have to go back to the layout workspace now if I take my cursor over here then if I right click it will give me two options vertical split and horizontal split so I'll click on horizontal split and now I can drag this line and I'll take it to around half of the scene and I finalized it with a left mouse button click now let's adjust it a little bit and we'll change this to the shader editor and here we'll see the output so click on this icon here and select shader editor and here these blocks are known as nodes or nodes components in blender and basically by using these you will be making your materials in blender for example if i want to change the cubes color i'll zoom in click on the base color and i can adjust the color of my cube from here for example if i want to set it to blue i'll drag it to blue but you won't notice any change here and that's because we are in the solid mode right now and to see the materials in blender you have two modes one is the material preview mode that you can access from here in which you can see how your material is looking in blender and the other one is the render view which is basically the fourth option from here and it basically shows you how your 3d object would look like when it is finally rendered now the way your final render would look depends on which render engine you're using so blender basically has two main render engines to see what they are you have to click on this render properties icon here and from here you can set the render engine now here you can see that there's a list of three render engines the default one is the ev the second one is the workbench and it shows the same thing that you see in the solid mode so we won't be using this because it won't show any materials on an object and the third one is the cycles now the cycles render engine is the most important render engine out of the three that's because the quality of output in this render engine is the best as compared to the other two and due to this reason it even takes a lot of time to render even a single image in cycles but that largely depends on the specifications of your PC if your PC is good enough to handle it it might take less time but if you are having a low end PC then it might take some more time to render in cycles but the final quality will be amazing but the other engine that is the EV it doesn't take much time to render it hardly takes four to five seconds to render but its quality is a bit low as compared to the cycle center engine in this course currently we will be using the cycle center engine while working on materials textures and nodes and this is just an overview of the render engines we'll be discussing about the render engine separately in some future chapter as well now the way the material on your object looks also depend upon the lighting of your scene a poor lighting can have a bad effect on how your material looks so right now we'll be learning about the basics of lighting and there are two ways by which you can properly lighten your scene one is the three point light and the other one is using HDRIs let's see the three point light system first as the name suggests in this system there are three lights one is the key light which is the main light the other one is the fill light which basically fills your scene with light and the third one is the backlight let's explore the key light first for this I'll delete this default light press X to delete now you can see that there are no lights in my scene so I'll press shift plus A select light and I'll add the area light let's move it up in Z direction and let's scale it up by pressing S and this light should be such that it faces the front of the cube for this I'll move it in Y direction bring it down in Z direction like this and to make it point towards the front face of the cube I'll press R to rotate and X to rotate it in X direction and now I can rotate it like this and left click to finalize now if I go to the camera view by pressing 0 on numpad there is still not much light and you can change this from the object data properties here you can change the power of light from here so I'll increase it and we'll change the location and rotation of this light so that both the faces have proper lighting for this let's zoom out press G and X to move it in X direction and let's rotate it in Y direction like this let's come out of the camera view by pressing 0 on numpad again and let's try to adjust the lighting properly for this I'll press 7 to go to the top view press G and adjust it like this now I'll press R to rotate it and I want to rotate it only in X and Y direction so I'll press shift plus Z so that the rotation remain restricted in X and Y direction only and let's finalize it here let's go to the camera view by pressing 0 and now both the faces have a proper lighting we can further increase the power from here and maybe I should 
should increase the power to something around 700 or maybe 550 and this one looks good and now we'll add the second light in our scene that is the fill light for this press 7 to go to the top view with this light selected press shift plus d to duplicate and we'll move it here let's change its rotation by pressing r and shift plus z so that it doesn't rotate in z direction and let's finalize it here since it's not the main light so we'll reduce its power to around 300 let's go back to the camera view and let's move this light a little bit in z direction like this and now let's add the backlight for this we'll again go to the top view by pressing 7 on numpad press shift plus d to duplicate it and move it at the location behind this cube left click to finalize and now we'll rotate it also so that the light point towards the cube and not away from it so press r and shift plus z and rotate it 180 degrees i entered the number from the numpad and then pressed enter to rotate it 180 degrees let's move it here just behind the camera and the object and its power should be very low like 150 watts because it won't be visible and only its slight effect will be visible while rendering so we'll reduce its power to something around 100 and let's go back to the camera view let's bring this backlight down in the z direction like this and now it's done but you might feel that this lighting system is a bit complicated and the solution for this is using hdris which is the second method of lighting and for this we'll select all the these lights first let's come out of the camera view with shift key hold it i'll select this light and this one also press x to delete them and now if i go to the camera view again you will see that there are no lights in our scene now to add an hdr in my scene i need to download it first and there are many websites to download it for free but there are four to five good ones and i'll drop their links in the description for now i'll be downloading an hdri from this polyheaven.com website and here you can find a large number of hdris for your blender projects for free and you can find a good variety also on this website for example if i go to this studio category here you can see that there are a lot of hdris here which will basically lighten up your scene as if there was a studio around your object similarly there are hdris for skies indoor scenes artificial lights etc which you can download and use for your blender files suppose i select this hdri and from here you can download it you can even change the resolution from here if you want 2k or 4k or 8k or 16k the higher the resolution the more power blender will use so let's set it to 4k and let's click on download now we'll return back to blender and to add the hdri in your scene in the world properties click on this yellow yellow dot against the color and select environment texture click on open and now you have to open that specific file that you have downloaded as the hdri so i've selected the file and i click on open image now you can see that the hdri is now added in my scene and it is creating this lighting effect and that's what an hdri do it will automatically create a balanced lighting effect in your scene without the use of adding any lights in your scene similarly you can also try adding other hdris by downloading them from different websites and trying them in your scene now if i select this cube you will notice that these will again appear here but right now let's delete them by pressing x on our keyboard and now our object has no material the reason for deleting is that we'll be creating a new material on our own and before adding any material we need to add a map to it and the map basically defines a pattern which the object material would show to understand it press shift plus a and you will see a menu here to add a map we'll go to input and the most common one is the texture coordinate so i'll select texture coordinate from this list and then you can left click to finalize its position now you can see here that there are seven different ways to map like generated normal uv etc and each one is a different way to tell the material how should we map a pattern but we need to connect it with some kind of pattern for this i'll press shift plus a go to texture and this is a list of all the textures in blender we'll be exploring each one in detail later on in this course but for now let's select this magic texture and left click to finalize its position now always remember that you have to connect the dots of same color with each other for example any of these purple dots can be connected to this purple dot of vector since they are of same color so suppose i left click on this generated one and if i drag it near to the vector they will be connected but we won't see any changes here because we need to add a shader that we'll put on the surface of this material so press shift plus a go to shader and here you can find a list of so many shaders but the most commonly used is the principled bsdf shader so i'll select this and let's add it here let's zoom out a little bit and if you want to navigate here then you can press your middle mouse button and drag like this now we'll connect the color from here to this base color in the principled bsdf and what it basically do is that it will give a color to this texture but you might be thinking why can't we see any texture or any material here and the answer to this is that there's no output option here for this press shift plus a go to output and we'll add material output because we are working on materials right now so i'll select this and left click to finalize it now there are two main ways to connect the material with the colors and textures one is the surface and the other one is the volume in most of the cases you will be using this surface one so we'll connect this bsdf with the surface and now you can see here that our cube has a basic texture and a color this one that is the magic texture help to add a texture to our object and the principal bsdf added a base color to our object that is the white color and the output one generated this output for us and now it's the time to learn how to apply materials to different objects for this let's delete this cube by pressing x and let's add a new cube in our scene and to apply a material or a color to it we have to go to the shader editor click on new and we'll change the base
base color from here and let's set it to red now let's add a few more objects in our scene so i'll press shift plus a and let's add a uv sphere move it up in z direction and let's create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus d and to change the color of this uv sphere we'll again go to the shader editor click on new and change the base color from here let's change it color to yellow now to apply the same yellow color to this uv sphere also we'll select this go to the material properties editor and click on this icon here you will see a list of all the materials that are assigned to the various objects in your scene so we'll select this yellow color and this yellow color will get assigned to this uv sphere also now suppose i want to change the color of these spheres to the red color of this cube now one way is to select this uv sphere click on this icon and then select it from here but there's a better method to do this and it's called the link materials method for this we'll select this sphere and with the shift key hold it select other uv sphere and at last we'll select this cube now on using the link materials tool the last selected objects color will apply to the others for this press ctrl plus l and this link menu will appear and from here select link materials and now you can see that the color of this cube has been assigned to the uv spheres as well and that's the use of the link materials tool and now our next topic is to explore the three common maps in blender so basically maps tell us about where the material is to be placed on an object and we are going to see the three most commonly used maps for this let's delete this by pressing x and let's add a new cube in our scene click on new for a new material so first we need to add an input node for this press shift plus a and in input select texture coordinate and left click to finalize and now we need to add a texture for this press shift plus a go to texture and let's add a brick texture and left click to finalize let's connect the color to the base color now you can see that even though the texture look good on the top it doesn't look so nice on the sides on this side it's not generating a complete brick texture and this side is completely black and the reason for this is that the brick texture supports only x and y axis and not the z axis and we can even change the appearance of this texture and to do this we have to change the parameters in this brick texture node for example if i set the offset to zero you will see that the texture looks like this and to see the difference that it made let's undo it so when the offset is 0.5 you can see that the brick texture is starting alternatively to understand what I mean, let's zoom in and now you can see that this brick face is not complete but the second one is complete. Similarly, the third one is not complete at the beginning and the fourth one is complete. That's because the offset is set to 0.5 but if I set it to 0, then you will notice two things. One is that the faces are uniform now and the other thing is that the texture on this face has disappeared. Now let's try changing some other parameters. You can see here that the faces are very small and to increase the size of these faces go to the scale option and let's set it to something like 2. And now you can see that the number of faces have reduced but their size has increased. And another way to change the size of these brick faces is to change the value of brick width and row height from here. For example if I set the brick width to 1 then this width is now equal to 1 meters or 1 unit. And if I change the row height to one also then this height here is now one meters or one unit and because both the width and height are equal it now makes square faces now suppose i want nine squares on the top for this i'll change the scale value to three changing the scale to three means that we now want three faces in both the x and y directions and all these faces are square since the width and height here are the same now some of you might have noticed here that we have not connected this texture coordinate with the brick texture earlier we used to connect generated to vector but now if i connect generated to vector then you won't notice any difference here and the reason is that we should not use generated in this case let me explain it properly there are two basic cases where you should not connect the socket of this generated to the socket of vector these little colored dots are called the sockets so what are the two cases when you should not use a generated socket the first one is that the object doesn't show any pattern on the sides or basically any texture on the sides and the second thing is that if i try to scale this cube suppose i press s and y to scale it in y direction like this then you will notice that the faces of this brick texture are no more squared shape the texture is also scaling up and to fix this we have to use the object socket so left click on this object socket and connect it to vector now we see one of our problems is solved that is the faces are now uniform but still the second problem is not solved that is the side faces are still black and to solve this problem we have to use uv now uv is a map that tells how every side of your object should look in your scene and to access it we have to add a uv editor in our scene for this take your cursor here and this double headed arrow will appear now right click and to split this area we have to select vertical split now we'll drag a cursor here and left click to finalize and to convert this into a uv editor click on this icon and select uv editor but we can't see anything here to fix this with your cursor hovering over the 3d viewport press tab to enter the edit mode and now you can see the faces here every square on this uv map is a face of this cube and now since we are using the uv editor we have to connect the uv socket to the vector so left click on the uv socket and drag it to the vector now the uv is connected to vector and it appears like this the texture is not looking good and to fix this we have to increase the scale value and now it looks something like this now let's try to use this uv editor to change this texture for this with a mouse hovering over the uv 
UV editor, press A. This will select all the vertices of the face in our UV editor. And now if we try to rotate it by pressing R, you will see that the texture is also rotating. And that's how you can change the texture of your object by using the UV editor. And you can finalize the texture by clicking left mouse button. Also, you can select any of these vertices. And if I press G to move them, then you can see that the texture on this face is also transforming as per the movement of this vertex. So you can use this UV editor to change this into anything that you like. So you can try experimenting different things to create different types of texture by using this UV editor. And also this UV editor solved a problem of not being able to see the texture on the sides. Now all the sides of our object has a visible texture on it. And the UV editor is also used for applying image textures on your object. And for those of you who don't know what an image texture is, basically we have an image on our system and we bring it to Blender and apply it on our object. Then that image is stretched and it applies to all the faces of our object. Now let's see how can you download some image textures online. So if you go to google.com and search for texture images. Let's go to the images option and here you can find a number of texture images. Suppose I select this one. Let's visit this website and this website offers you many image textures for free. So let's click on this one and you can download it for free. And now the image texture is downloaded. So let's return back to Blender. And to bring the image in Blender, we'll press Shift plus A here, go to texture. And from this list, we have to select image texture. And to add the image, click on open. Now this window will appear and you have to choose your file from the required location and click on open image. Now you can see that even though the texture is added here but you can't see it on your object because it is not connected to this principal BSDF. And to connect them, click on this color socket and we'll join it to the base color. Select this one and with the shift key hold it select this one. Let's move them a little away. Now we'll select this one and let's take it here. Now you can see that our object has this wood texture on it from the image that we applied here but we should also add an input here. So we'll bring the texture coordinate here and even though the UV is connected to this brick texture right now but if I click on this UV and connect it to vector it will connect to the image texture also and now if I go to this UV editor and press A and try to rotate it or scale it then you will notice that the changes that I make here are also visible on the object here and so you can use this image texture to apply any image as a texture on your object and so that's all in this chapter. Now there are two important things to tell you. The first thing is that if you are learning material textures and nodes for the very first time then it might be possible that you might have doubts in some concepts right now and the solution for this is to rewatch the video or maybe that specific part where you feel that you have some doubts because for most of the people it's not possible to understand all such concepts which are so complex at the first time and also you can write your doubts in the comment section and I'll reply to them. The second thing is that previously I decided that this course will have around 35 to 40 chapters but here's a little update about this course. I have added a few more chapters and now the total length of this course will be around 70 to 80 chapters. The reason for doing this is that we can cover all the concepts properly in each chapter of this course. So this brings us to the end of this chapter and our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 14 where we'll take a step forward towards the intermediate level of note components. So if you are new to this channel then don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button and press the notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.